Hello, welcome to No Filter Boxing. This week we're in Marbella as we catch up with Tyson Fury and his trainer Ben Davison. 2018 saw Fury return to the ring against all odds, including a world heavyweight title fight for the ages. It was one of boxing's iconic stories, and Fury is now raring to go in 2019. All these so-called boxing experts, every one of them thought that I couldn't do it. I believe I can beat any boxer at a boxing match. I mean, that's what separates him from the rest. People who watch boxing, they know, don't they? Everybody, everybody knows. They know come over and say, look, should have won the fight. Said it so many times, the freak of nature, that man. It really is. We awoke a sleeping giant. Guess who's back? It's going to be frightening for whoever steps in with him next. I think I've got another 10 years left in this game. I don't fear anybody. I think everyone should fight each other, but not everybody thinks like that. People go back to work on the on the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. We went back to work on the first. It's uh, it's what we do for a living, and we take it seriously, and we do it full time. You know, the past 12, 13 months, I've lived with Tyson. I've probably been home two, three weeks of that. Without routine and structure, people go crazy. People lose their minds, and people start to deteriorate. And uh, you see it with people when they retire, when they get older, or they lose their job. You know, it's having that routine and that structure that, that keeps you sane and the human body needs it, the human mind needs it, it's very important and like I say, this is just what we do for a living. It's a lot easier to get up for a run when you've got the, the, the nice weather, the sound of the beach, the smell of the sand and the, and the sea, you know, with the sun bouncing off it, it's, it's, it's pleasurable and it's something that Tyson enjoys as well. And he said to me the other day, funnily enough, he said, it seems crazy to think that when now I run for pleasure, I'm doing this run now for pleasure, he said, as opposed to all my life I've run to lose weight. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, if you can enjoy what you do, it makes a big difference. All I want is to be happy, and that's it. If I can make me happy and my family happy, then that makes the world happy. Because if, if you're happy in your own self, in your own mind, and your family's happy, then what does it matter if everybody else is happy? Because they've got their own cross to bear, they've got their own life to live. I can't make you happy, you can only make you happy. I can give you advice and give you inspiration and motivation, but at the end of the day, it's you who have to make yourself happy. Nobody else is gonna do it for you. When I was down and depressed and, and in a lonely place, nobody could make me happy, make me better. I had to do it myself, me. And that's what, and that's what I want to get across. Because I think sometimes people who try to give, get the message across on all these bad things, they sort of like, the message is like, oh, someone else is going to do it for you. But I can say nobody's going to do it for you apart from you. You have to wake up in the morning and want to be a better person. You have to wake up in the morning and want to change. You have to wake up in the morning and put yourself in a positive mood. You know, that's the way it is. My career, like I said, is one thing. Never, there's never been an issue with my career. I've always done what I had to do in my boxing career. The issue was in my personal life, I was depressed and I was down and anxiety and I just, that was the problem. But now I balanced it because before I was training and boxing and then when, that, when I stopped training camp, I'd just go and eat like a lunatic and do what I wanted in my personal life. But now I've got a routine, I train in the morning, I, I look forward to things. And before it was like I took everything for granted, like the simple things in life, like being able to be here and be in a sensible mood. But now I appreciate good days, I appreciate sunshine, I appreciate breathing fresh air and being able to think for myself and, and do the right things. Well, before it was like, this is hectic, can't do it. Now I've got more of a balance in my personal life rather than my professional career, if that makes sense at all. Now I, I know I've got to go to the gym because that's my medicine. If I don't take a medication, then I must train because training to me is medication. And without it, I'm gonna go back to the place I was. Back to the place I was before. 
you know what? He can't keep him out of the gym, to be honest. Can't keep him out. When I, I went on holiday after the fight, and uh, every morning I was waking up to a text, when are you back, when are you back? I was thinking, oh, will you go away? But listen, it's, like I say, it's what we do for a living, and it's nice to enjoy what you do. It never stopped. I continued the work, the dedication, the sacrifice that I did in 2018, and I brought it with me into 19. Happy New Year, everybody! I love training. I really, really love training. It's something that I love to do, keep myself out of trouble, keeps me in shape, keep me mentally well, and I recommend it for everybody, especially people who suffered with mental health. This is my medicine, and if I don't do it, I go depressed again. I had four days off over the Christmas. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like this, couldn't sit down. I was going depressed and depressed and depressed, and the only thing that gives me the medicine that makes me well again is training. Try it. I've been going out here for quite a number of years now. Uh, I used to go to the south of France, and then I uh, started to come here, and I liked it. I, met, I, met, I trained over here with Billy Joe a few years ago, and I've never stopped coming back since. So if you don't know Jimmy Riley, he's the godfather for a boxing. <laughs> I was telling him about Angelo Dundee telling me about Muhammad Ali in the corner. Yeah. He's um, his corner man, Tommy Burke, who worked for me for quite some time. And Angelo said, you know, the problem I have, he said, is whatever I tell him to do in the corner, he won't do. But if I tell him about a previous fight, that you know when you did such a thing, he'll do it. They said, but that was the way he used to work. I said this to young Ben Davison. I said, you know what? I said, I've watched you, and there's trainers and trainers, but you've got to have that chemistry between you and the fighter. Because if you haven't, it don't work. It's like a football team having a bad manager. It, you know, but if you've got a good trainer and you're on that level with him, then the world's your oyster. And of course, these two get on so well, and I've watched them training down here for hours and hours and hours. And I said to Ben Davidson, I said, you know what, Angelo Dundee would have been proud of you, son. I said, because you've got something a bit special about you. All my career, I've always been the underdog in all the big fights. Everyone was always supposed to beat me, but nobody ever did. So I feel, I feel like now it's finally turned around and everyone, everyone can see what they can see, really. They can see that I am at that level and whatever. Because before this Wilder fight, I was going to get blown away, apparently, in a round or whatever, by everybody's opinion. And I, I just don't know what they're looking at. I really don't. I think they let the heart rule the, the judgment, the good judgment. Mm. Maybe that's what they want to happen. All these so-called boxing experts and, and writers and everybody else, every one of them thought that I couldn't do it. And it's just like time and time again I do. I have to keep proving you're wrong. Like, what is it that I do or that, that I, I fight like that makes you believe I can't do anything? I believe I can beat any boxer. It's just a boxing match, you know. I've had loads of them all my life, boxed all my life, and it's like, I don't look at these people and think, oh, I'm afraid. But I wouldn't have picked the biggest puncher in boxing history in Deontay Wilder. Because believe it or not, Deontay Wilder is the biggest punching heavyweight in heavyweight history of thousands of years, hundreds of years of boxing. And I looked at him and I didn't, I didn't fear him. I smiled and licked my lips at the, the chance of eating him up. And if everything would have been fair, then that's what would have happened. The decision is a split decision draw. After the decision was announced, I was like, that's bad. But I, I had to try and control all the crowd. I had a lot of fans there and it was all going nuts. My brother Shane was at the forefront of it all. He wanted to go crazy. I said, look, just chill out, calm down. Going on is not going to cause anything. Just give our country and our sport a bad reputation. Let's not do that. Let's not make Listen, from what you've got, Ken Stone, three years. Let's get it done. Come on, right. Rob. We know the truth, mate. We know the truth. I will not fight. People who watch boxing, they know, don't they? Everybody, everybody knows, like grannies in the street, women pushing prams, everybody. They know to come over and say, look, you should have won the fight, mate, unlucky. What do you mean it's fine? You've just took away the biggest comeback, not in boxing history, in sports history, from a man that's come back from hell, and it's fine. You've got to be a sick man to do that, a sick, sick man. I was annoyed at the time. I was very annoyed at the time, but it's just disappointment now because I just, you know, I 
we knew it was a possibility. But when that final bell went, I ran in the ring. And I, I thought to myself, my thought process was there's no way they can not give it now. And uh, with what's just happened, and they did it. And like I said, I was angry at first, and then I was disappointed now, looking back on it. The disappointment was one thing. We worked hard, we trained hard. We deserved what we trained for. We didn't get the result we were looking for, but it's not going to upset us. It's not going to make us unhappy. It's not going to make me put on a load of weight or whatever. I didn't think about walking away from the sport or nothing. I performed to the best of my ability. I was happy with Ben's work. Everyone done what they should have done, apart from the judges. Apart one of them did. Um, but it was what it was. Can't do anything about it. So we move on, move forward into 19 now. I've seen so many different times and along the journey there's been so many different points where I thought that's where it's what separates him from the rest. And I don't mean the rest is in the, the lower level fighters, I mean that's what separates him from the rest of the, the elite. His mindset and what he can put, push himself to and his mental strength is just phenomenal. And then this is what I was thinking fight week, okay, so I was thinking like this man's on another planet mentally. like. And he come to me in the changing room, and he said, when he walked in, because I, I was already there with Isaac, I didn't bother going back to the hotel, I was already there. And he come to me in, in the changing room, and he put his hands on my shoulders, he said, now's my chance to tell you that I listen to everything that you tell me. And I thought, okay, good, that's what I wanted to hear. Then, the 12th round come round, he got knocked down, and he got up and I thought, not only is this man on another level mentally, but physically, because you don't see that. You don't see that happen in the first round when people get up and have their senses, uh, balance, do a little jog and come back, like he come back. And for that to happen in the 12th round, he's not, I said it so many times, he's a freak of nature, that man. He really is. Oh my goodness, somehow Fury has managed to get up. It was a great talking point, you know. Great, it was good moments in the air. The, Getting up in the 12th round was a hell of a thing to come back from. And they had just the whole, whole build up for the fight, it was an amazing, amazing experience, you know. Me and Wilder, we really went at it in the, in the build ups, in the press conferences. We give the fans value for money. Where's Wilder at now then? <laughs> and I believe that it'll be even better next time. Because Wilder's gonna come better, I'm gonna come better for this next fight. It's just gonna be a bigger, better fight. I hate to say it, but I told you so. I did tell you, it's like, the beginning of the year in June when I had my first fight, it was like, I knew what I was gonna do. I just had to do it. I've already promised the fans I will be supreme once again. I'll win the world titles back. They're, to me, they're only belts. I've already got 15 belts at home, including five world titles. So many belts. They're almost unimportant to me. But I will beat all these pretenders once again. It's an iconic moment that, like you say, Tyson will be remembered for. But not only the fight in itself, the courage that it took for Tyson to take that test because I was one, one for it that I said before. I said to him take a couple more fights because not that he didn't have the skill set and wasn't capable of beating Deontay Wilder, but it would, it would have made it an easier chance, an easier option, an easier fight with a little bit of time. We always talk and talk a lot, and I think it helps. It's important that we do that, and we always discuss it. And I, and I said to him, look, it's when, when you're in that, it's hard to understand it when you're in it. But I said to him, that is an, that'll be an iconic fight that will go down in history. Um, certain moments in that fight as well. But that fight alone, you know, and that story will never be forgotten. You've never seen that happen before. And Muhammad Ali done something similar. But his time out of the ring, he was in the gym, he was training, he stayed in shape. Tyson didn't, you know, and he didn't go through the, the depression and all the things that Tyson went, went through. And, you know, Muhammad Ali, known as the greatest, he come back, but he didn't win that fight against Joe Frazier the first time round. Tyson come back and, and took on, you know, not just a champion, percentage-wise and stats, the biggest puncher in heavyweight history. And, uh, that will take, take time, but eventually that will be remembered in history. And it'll only be, it might only sink in for Tyson when he retires, you know, but obviously it's, it's people around him that, that can help remind him of that and, and, and uh, let him know that he's been part of something that 
not far off a miracle, to be honest. I don't hate Deontay Wilder. It's not his fault that the judges robbed me. You know, he only done the best he could. He was over the moon with the decision. He was like, yeah, I got a draw, thank you. It was what it was. It, it, is, it is, I don't dislike Wilder. He's just a boxing man to me. It's just a boxing match, you know what I mean? There's, there was no animosity, you know. I didn't want to kill him or anything. It was just a boxing fight. It was just a great fight for the fans and a great fight for the sport because there's a lot of great fights out there that, that very rarely get made. And I didn't want me and Wilder to be the same, so that's why I just jumped at the chance to go over there and fight him in his own country. I was over here this time last year, really fat, really out of shape, and couldn't do any running or nothing. And I thought to myself, this is going to be a long way back, this. But I look at it now, and it's like over a year ago. I can't believe that's gone so quick. And I look back on them, and they were great times. They were good times. They'll go down in my memory bank as they were the good old days. They were good. That was some very good times. They're losing their weight on the training camp and all that. But I'm here now, and I'm, I'm on weight, and I'm, I'm fit, and. It doesn't feel like the same buzz, to be honest. I feel like almost like a little bit low, if you know what I mean, because I don't have that big mountain to climb and there's not all the expectations of can he do it, if he can, he would, it should, or all that sort of stuff. And it's almost like I'm going into 19, fit, healthy, fresh, ready, and it's like, wow, this is a new, new thing. I've never done this before. Because coming into January, usually, I would have had to lose about, I don't know, five stone minimum every time. So this is new territory for me and I think I finally turned the corner and it took me 30 years to get to this point where I don't need to go out and drink tons of beer or go out and eat loads of rubbish. I can, I can, I'm really happy just training. And if I eat something today, I'll, I'll do a run at night to get rid of it. And then I'll do another run in the morning. So I really have, I really have turned the corner with it all. Listen, I want a rematch with Wilder. They're the ones who've got to redeem themselves, not me. We're sitting at the top of the tree. Joshua, even with two hammers in each hand, could never beat Tyson Fury, and they know it. Tyson is looked at as the number one heavyweight now. I'm the lineal heavyweight championship of the world. I don't need a belt, an alphabetical title. So many of them. What I have, you can't be given. In order to get to the top, you have to do some mad things and you have to be willing to do some crazy stuff to get there or else you're never going to achieve greatness. Greatness never becomes easy. You never get anything good easy. Anything that's good in life is always very hard to get or everybody would have it. So you've got to be willing to take risks. Muhammad Ali said, for he is not, who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing. And I've risked everything my whole career to get to this point. I'm sat here in Marbella on a seat in the sand and I'm like thinking, well, what do I do next? Keep fighting, another boxing fight? Yeah, let's do it. I'm hopefully going to get out in April again. Um, hopefully I'll get the Wilder rematch, but if not, then I'll be out in April anyway. I'm just going to keep busy. I'm enjoying myself. I'm 30 year old. I think I've got another 10 years left in this game, as long as I look after myself. And I seem to be doing a decent job of that now. So I'm not bothered. To me, they're just boxing fights. I don't, I don't fear anybody. They're all welcome to come and challenge me for the lineal championship. I think everyone should fight each other, but not everybody thinks like that. People are afraid of losing a fight or whatever, so they don't take the fights. Where me, if you lose to a better man on the night, congratulations, mate, there's me and shake you, thank you very much. See you again in the future sometime. But not everybody's got that outlook on life. Listen, I want a rematch with Wilder. If it happens or not, it's down to them. If they want the fight, they want it. If they don't, no problem to me. They're the ones who've got to redeem themselves, not me. I've done everything I should have done. I don't need to redeem myself. I don't need a second chance at glory. I'm the lineal heavyweight championship of the world. I don't need a belt, an alphabetical title. So many of them. What I have, you can't be given. It's who puts the best offer in first, you know? Who puts the best offer in first? We're sitting at the top of the tree because Joshua said he wants to fight Wilder. Wilder said he wants to fight us. So everybody makes their moves depending on what we do. Tyson is looked at as the number one heavyweight now because of what he's done and, and the performance that he's pulled off. I think 
it's sunk in with people now how good he really is. I've already beat Wilder, so that's one down. And I'll do the same to Joshua if given the chance, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I'm sorry to disappoint the sports fans, but it ain't going to happen. It's disappointing for the paying customer and the fans because they're not going to get to see that fight. Because Joshua, even with two hammers in each hand, could never beat Tyson Fury, and they know it. They know that. They're not silly, and it's a business as well, so they're not going to take the fight, simple as. They may say they're going to take the fight, talk about it, and then fight somebody else, like they keep doing, but that fight ain't going to happen. Either fight's a good fight. Um, obviously, negotiations have to be held, but we're open to either fight, either fight. I said to him this morning, funny enough, the, the biggest risk and the, and the worst route and the worst fight you could have took, he's done it, because after losing 10 stone, he can't be 100% after losing 10 stone. He's lost a, a light welterweight off his body. And how are you going to be 100% doing that? So he's gone into that fight 60%. From what I'm seeing in the gym now, I always said for a long time, when I, when I get to give him a rest and come back to him, it'll be frightening. And I know about it. I've done three or four round, days on the pads with him. I have to have a rest. I said to him yesterday, you're going to have to hit that bag today because he's butchered me. Good workout today. It's going to be frightening when uh, whoever, whoever steps in with him next because he'll be 100% then. We awoke a sleeping giant. The heavyweight division has always been a giant in the game, and it has been sleeping in the US for a long time. And I believe that me and Deontay have done a fantastic job of waking the sleeping beast and giving it a thirst for blood. And now all of a sudden, the American public want to see heavyweight fights again. They want to see the rematch, it's in demand. You know, hopefully I get a, a fight with uh, Deontay Wilder in America or in England. I'm not really bothered where it is. If it's in Australia or Antarctica, it wouldn't be a problem to me, whatever the fight can be. When you do what you're supposed to do and you get the results that you work for, the rest of it will come. And if you look for positivity and, and nice comments and that brings you joy, then when you see the negative, that's going to affect you as well. So you need to have a good balance and just focus on, on, on what it is that you do. My job is to bring the best out of the fighters that I work with. And if I do that, you're going to get praise and you're going to get nominated for these things if they do well. So just focus on your job at hand and the rest of it will all follow. Obviously, Freddie's a fantastic trainer. That he's, he's, uh, he's a legend in the game. He's, uh, he's bound to have his own philosophies and his own thoughts and his own opinion, which is, uh, is not a problem, you know. Um, normally you wouldn't have somebody that, of that stature being a second. So normally he'd be number one, he's not used to being in that position. So maybe he's a little bit more outspoken than he should have been, as what he said to me, but it's not a problem. Um, I said to him, he rang me, he said, look, it was took out of context. Um, I didn't mean it how it come across. Um, I was just talking about what potentially we could work on for a potential rematch. I said, Freddie, not a problem. Like I said, every trainer's got their own philosophies, their own ideas. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm Tyson's trainer and, and I make the decisions. And um, I don't think we went too far wrong, to be honest. I know my fighter better than anyone. When you've had an illness like me, you can't look into the future. I can't look weeks in advance, months, years. I can only live for today. Because tomorrow I might, be, I might be in a low place. I'm just happy to be alive, breathing fresh air and be healthy. Because that's the most important thing, really. So just be happy for who you are and what you are and take every day for, as a blessing, because it is. We're not, here, we're not here for a long time. If we get 70 or 80 years, we've been very, very, very lucky. So enjoy yourself and enjoy your people around you, your friends and your family and your relatives and everybody you've got around you. Because one day it's all going to be over. I'm going to look back at it and we're going, we're old people, hopefully. I think, you know what? I did the best that I could in my life because I put everything in and I enjoyed myself.